Hello everyone. So our today's question was recently asked in a Morgan Stanley interview. Let's have a look at it. So the question says, given an array of n elements, we need to find the number of subsets whose product of elements is less than or equal to a given integer k. So in order to understand this question properly, let's have a look at sample input and output. So the sample input is capital N equals to 4, hence we have 4 elements in our given array and the value of k is given as 12. So what we need to do, we need to find that how many such subsets are there of this particular array in which if we do the product of elements in those subsets that comes out to be either less than or equals to 12. So if you carefully observe my output which is 8, it says that I have 8 such subsets. If we do the product of these, it comes out to be less than or equals to 12. So let's have a look at it. 2 times 5 equals to 10. 10 is less than 12. Hence it is there in the output and so on for the rest of them. So if you count total number of such subsets are 8. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Hence your output is 8. So I hope the question is clear to you. Now let's have a look at the logic to solve this particular problem. So I have copied the same question over here along with the sample input and output. Now what comes first in our mind? I think what we can do is we can consider all the possible subsets and in each time I will check what is the product of the elements present in it. If it is less than or equals to 12, I will include it in my answer. So this is the brute force solution for this question. So for n equals to 4, we will have 16 subsets which is nothing but 2 to the power 4. How come 2 to the power 4? Because we have 4 places. Every time we have a choice that whether we can take it or not in our subset. So as there are 4 places, so I will have 2 to the power 4 such subsets. Now I think I can improvise this solution. I can do better than this. So let's have a look at it. Now let's have a look at a concept called meet in the middle which will help us to improvise our solution. So how does this work? Let's see. So given an array of 4 elements, meet in the middle says let's first divide our given array in middle. So what I'm going to do, I'm partitioning it into two parts. Now this partition does not always guarantee that you will have equal number of elements in either side because let's say if you would have five elements then obviously on one side you will have one more element compared to other. We will see those generalizations when we'll go through the code. Right now let's try to understand this concept. So what we have done, we have partitioned it into two parts and let's say we are maintaining two arrays A1 and A2. A1 will contain the products of all the subsets of the first half and A2 will contain the product of all the subsets of the second half. So the elements in both of them, let's say in A1 we have elements like small A1, small A2, small A3 and in A2 we have small B1, small B2, small B3 suppose. So this is just to give you a general idea. What does this small a1 means? It could be a product of any one subset from my first half. Similarly over here b1, b2, b3 could be product of any one subset from the second half. Now how will this help us? So what is our aim? Our aim is to find such combination. Let's say if I take a combination of a1 multiplied with b1 if this is less than or equals to k, I should include this particular subset in my final answer. Let me try to explain it. So a1 will contain some elements from my first part. Similarly b1 will contain some elements from my second part. Now as a whole if I combine the elements from first and the second part, I will be getting a total subset. And if the product of both of them is less than or equals to k, I can surely include it. So I hope this is clear to you. Now let's proceed forward. How can we approach to our output? So for that what we are going to do, we will take a1 and we will go through all the elements in a2 and check this condition. Whether a1 multiplied with b1 less than equals to k, if it is yes, increment my final answer variable by 1. Similarly, whether a1 multiplied with b2 is less than or equals to k, if it is yes, so on increment your answer. But do you think this will help? Let's have a look at it. If I am dividing it into two parts, it means I have n by 2 elements over here and n by 2 elements over here 
and the subset of those n by 2 elements their products are stored in a1 similarly the subset of those n by 2 elements their corresponding products are stored in a2 now what will be the total comparison if i try to do the comparison what is the time complexity of the solution so can i say that over here we will have 2 to the power n by 2 such elements because we have 2 to the power n by 2 subsets hence 2 to the power n by 2 products similarly over here we will have 2 to the power n by 2 products now for each element in a1 i am traversing entire a2 so what is this turning out to be 2 to the power n by 2 multiplied with 2 to the power n by 2 which is equals to 2 to the power n so we went for optimization but what we are seeing that our time complexity has not yet improved so how can we tackle this we will be using meet in the middle but in a smarter way let's have a look at it so the improvisation what we can do is for each element of a1 when we are traversing a2 and checking the possible combinations we can traverse a2 in a better way so what do i mean to say is what if we sort a2 so if we sort a2 how this will look like we will have b1 less than b2 and b2 less than b3 this surety we will have so what will i be able to achieve through this let's have a look at it now suppose you compared your a1 multiplied with b1 and you are checking if it is less than equals to k or not if it comes out to be true great you will be including that particular subset product in your answer and hence you will increment your answer by 1 now you are checking a1 multiplied with b2 if it is less than equals to k or not if this comes out to be false then there is no need to check anything at the bottom of it why because you are sure that one of part of your answer is not satisfying now the next is b3 which is already greater than b2 so that will also not satisfy this is the way we can improvise our solution now let's have a look at the code in c++ so we have a function num of subsets that takes in the given array its size and the value k and we have two vectors vect1 and vect2 which will store our first half and second half of our array with the help of this for loop in case if we have any particular element which is greater than k we are avoiding it as per the code and subset 1 and subset 2 are basically our a1 and a2 as i explained in the logic it will be storing all the products of the subsets present in vector 1 subset 2 will be storing all the products of the subset present in vector 2 so if we come down this is the code where we have two for loops for storing the products of my subsets now let me explain this for loop to you in detail now let's have a look at the nested for loop and try to understand how this is helping us to calculate the product of the subsets so if you carefully observe in the outer for loop we have i equals to 0 and it is going till 1 less than 1 left shift vect1 dot size so what is my vect1 dot size this is 3 so 2 to the power 3 is basically 1 left shift vect1 dot size because if you carefully observe this is your 1 let's say this is your one you are left shifting it three times so it goes over here and it finally becomes eight which is nothing but two to the power three so you are going one less than it hence zero till seven after that we have a j loop which goes from zero till vect one dot size which is also going one less than it hence it is going from zero one and then two so as is a nested for loop so for each value of i you will go through all the values of j so i have written a brief dry run of it like for first time you will be doing if check where you will have i as 0 and you will have ampersand 1 left shift j where you will consider all the three cases of j similarly you will do it for 1 2 3 4 and till 7 and accordingly j will vary in each one of them with the values of 0 1 and 2 so if your i is 0 no matter what you do with the value of j it will always come out to be 0 correct now let's take a case of 3 so with the case of 3 i'll explain you how we are considering the product so as you can see i can take three values of j so if my j is 0 and if my j is 1 if my j is 2 i have shown you three cases so this if will become true if i have a non-zero value 
So I am getting a non-zero value only in only in these two cases. In this case, I am getting a zero. What it means that I will be able to enter inside if only in these two cases when my j is zero and my j is one. So when my j is zero and my j is one, it means I am considering one and three. So this time my product will be basically one times three and that will be taken into consideration. So now let's have a look at a pattern. So I have written from zero till seven in binary number system and when we take three, we are basically considering this bit and this bit. So this zero is representing my zeroth element in my array. One is representing my first element. First element is in the sense zeroth index and first index. So that is the reason we are considering one and three. Similarly, if you take six, you will get non-zero values in when j was my one and my j is two. That is the reason we have taken these two. So at that time, we will take three and five. Similar manner will do for rest of the iterations. And finally, you will have your subset one over here properly inserted with all the products of the subset in my vector one. Now, one more thing to understand in for loops is that when my i is zero, this if will never be true and my value will remain one. So when I come down, I am checking is my one less than equals to k. So as discussed in our sample input, the value of k was 12. So at that time, this will be pushed it into the subset two. And so will happen for subset one. So let's figure out which subset is this referring to. So when my i is zero, it is basically referring to the empty subset. And according to the question, we are not allowed to use empty subsets. So we will see how we are going to tackle this at the end. Let's proceed further. So after that, we are sorting our subset two as discussed in the logic and we're running our for loop on subset one. And in this, we are checking how many elements are there in subset one, which can map with subset two such that we'll have our product less than equals to k. So for that, we are using a function upper bound of C++ STL. So let's see how does this work. So it is basically passed on subset two where we are searching for the element k divided by subset one i. Now, how does it work? So your k is nothing but multiplication of some element from subset one and subset two. Now, can I say that k divided by subset one is what we are trying to search, which is nothing but some value which we are trying to figure out from subset two, like if this is true, then you will take it into consideration in your answer. So let me explain it to you with the help of an example. So let's say in your subset one, you have one, three, seven, two. This is not sorted. Please note it. In your subset two, let's say you have three, seven, nine, and 10. Okay. And your value of K is 12. Now what you're doing K by subset one. So for this one, basically you're trying to search 12 by one, that is 12 in your subset two. So what it will return? It will return the index of the element, which is just greater than your searched value. So basically it will be returning some iterator over here because 12 is greater than all of them. And what you're doing at the end, you're trying to subtract the begin index. So it will basically give you a count of how many elements are less than that particular value or equal to that particular value respectively if required. So I hope this is matching with the approach which we discussed while going through the logic that we'll be considering all the elements above the concerned element in subset two as all the products will be less than or equals to k. If you have any doubt, you can go back to the video of that part of the logic and watch it. Having said that, at the end, we are decrementing our count by one. Why? To take care of that empty subset case. Because in case of empty subset, we'll have some scenario where we'll have this product as one. And this product as one will take an extra count of your answer. Because this one will map with the one present in subset two. As I discussed, that we'll be pushing back one in this case also. 
Now that is the case for empty subset and we need to remove it because if you carefully observe 1 multiplied with 1 will always be less than equals to k if I take k as 12 and I don't want to take it according to the question. Now let's compile and run the code. So as you can see it is getting compiled properly. Let's submit it. Yeah, so it is getting submitted. Let's wait for the output. Yeah, so there we go. We got the correct answer. So I hope the code is clear to you.